Hi guys, welcome to episode 32 of West End Talks. Today we're going to talk about the last five years, not literally. Um, we're going to talk about the show. Uh, now you may wonder why we're talking about this show because it hasn't been on the West End for a while. Or has it? We'll talk about that much a bit later, later on. Well, obviously in this episode tonight we have the wonderful Danny Becker, who you'll know from the last five year, years lockdown version. He's obviously, he's also in the ensemble and cover Moses in Prince of Egypt. He was the understudy for Fabrizio. I think that's right, but don't quote me on that one. Uh, and he was also an ensemble for Light in the Piazza. He was understudy Aladdin and ensemble for Aladdin, uh, obviously. Uh, Rocketman, and then obviously the last five years. So without further ado, let's welcome Danny. Mr. Becker. Hello. Hi, Hi welcome. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Very well, thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining us. It's, it's our pleasure, definitely. Um, with that list, you, you've, you've got a fantastic career in theatre and film, because uh, you've been in, in a few films, not just the, 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 the hotly anticipated Rocket Man. Yes, yeah, I've, I've been very lucky, and I'm not sure quite how or why, but I'm very, very grateful. Probably because you're talented. <laughs> That's maybe what the reason. Um, hopefully that's one of the reasons hopefully yeah, yeah. And, and as i said in the intro as well obviously you're one of the you've been one of the busiest actors in the last three months yeah that's been very very cool and interesting and unexpected yeah we we, we did the last five years and that happened yeah. and in lockdown i uh, will we'll talk about that a bit but a bit more obviously in detail but i, I saw it on the last night and it was outstanding that's all i'll say at the moment well, can I get into a bit more when we we, we, watch, we talk about it later on? But the Thanks. first question, as 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 ever, as the same as as every episode, is what got you into performing? Yeah, great question. Uh, I okay, what got me into it? I as long as I remember, I feel like I've been obsessed with theatre and musicals, particularly. Um, I can tell you a few stories. One. Uh, my mum, she tell I don't remember this, but she tells me that we saw the Mr. Men. Do you know the Mr. Men? Yeah, the books, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They were on stage. I think I was about two years old and my parent, my mum took me and even that, I, I, she, she gave me ice cream in the interval and the ice cream just melted all over me because I was so fixated on this performance. Um, to be fair, I'm quite a messy, so it kind of it kind of encompasses a lot about me. But um, she tells me that memory. But I remember um, seeing cats when I was quite young, being very scared, but just it had such an impression on me. And I was lucky enough because I come from North London. Um, my parents would take me in once a year, normally for my birthday, to see a West End show. So I think that's where my love just grew and grew and grew. Um, but yeah, I think it is. I think it was probably just them taking me and showing me what theatre was about. But do you want the whole journey of how I got? No, like, no, not at all. It's up to you. Whatever you want to answer, um, however you want to answer these questions, that's up to you. Uh, but that's great. Obviously, Mr. Main. Uh, I've never, I've never personally seen it. Um, I saw it on TV and I've read the books, but not on stage. Didn't know it was a stage show. So learn something yeah. new every day. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, but what was your first performance? Um, first, that I actually performed in. Yeah. Uh, it would definitely have to be an Amdram uh, show, because I, I used to love my Amdram when I was a kid. Um, I think it was probably, I think it was West Side Story, I want to say. A great That's one to start on, right? Yeah. A great That's one. Fun. Um, and I was, I remember being very nervous and I, I didn't really sing back then. My first thing was acting. Uh, and then when I got quite confident in acting, I was then like, right, I'll try the singing and then dance. It kind of went in that order for me. Right. But um, yeah, I remember being in the ensemble of that. Uh, and I think I was a shark. Oh, was a you took the words right out of my mouth. I was about to say with you, a shark or a jet. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was, um, a I was just like living my best life. I think certainly from everything that I've seen you, and I've now seen you in three things. Um, well, I've seen you in Rocket Man, but 
uh, four things in technically, um, but I think you're living your best life and everything. Let's be honest. Uh, anytime I've seen you on stage or in film version, you're definitely living your best oh, life. Oh, thank you, thank um, you. So now we we hold no responsibility for the next set of questions. They all come from fans of yours or fans of the shows that you've been in. Some right. of them um, have come from abroad. Uh, oh. so you have fans in America, uh, both for, for two shows. I think a lot of them came from this show, because obviously this was broadcast around the world. Um, and also you have performed in, in LA, which, in LA we'll, yeah. which we'll come to later on yeah. in the, the chat. But the first question comes from Sophie, and she asks, you've done all three of performing, i.e. TV, film, and stage. Yeah. What's your favourite? Thank you, Sophie. Um, my favourite, I think... Just my my love is, is theatre. It's the, it always comes back to theatre to theatre for me. Um, I just love. It's it, they're all so different. I mean, the essence of everything is so it's the same thing, but the experience of having an audience and it being a very palpable live thing that happens only then. You know, whatever you give that audience can never and will never be repeated in that exact same way. So that thrills me. Um, and I just love it. I just love it. So it's that. But I also, there is a different charm with TV and film. But I do, I don't really like the waiting around. There is a lot of waiting around. Um, but yeah, I, I want to be able to do it all, to be honest. Um, but my, yeah, I think I'll always go back to theatre. Yeah, I think the, theatre for a lot of people, because you're getting the, the initial reaction as well, you get the automatic reaction from you. If you're good or bad, you know straight away. Whereas yeah, film, it took you, it was, a, it was a year you filmed after, before the Rocket Man, like for Rocket Man, for example. Yeah, it was. And then it was a year before it was out. Yeah, it was a long time, which is always, it's really weird, actually. And same with, um, same with last five years, strangely. I mean, not a year, but we filmed it, it got edited, and then it was shown. And having, the delayed reaction is very bizarre because it's like you have that opening night feel but you've not you're not doing anything you're just yeah. waiting for everyone else's response which is something yeah i don't love it's it's nice to just getting it straight away like you say it's it's yeah, bizarre like, it's weird yeah definitely definitely i can imagine i can I, i'm not a performer but i can understand that um, and yeah. with, with reactions and stuff so moving on to to this small thing that you did in lockdown um, I think the, the, the best piece of theatre I've certainly seen in the last three months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen in a long while as well. Um, definitely a long while. It was absolutely fantastic. You and Lauren were just, oh, blew my mind, definitely. Anyway, moving on. because um, James has asked, how did the last five years come about? Um, okay, so I, I was sitting in my parents' garden in lockdown. <laughs> And I got a call from my agent saying, this uh, Lambert Jackson Productions, who I'm very, I was familiar with, and um, Lauren Samuels and Jason Robert Brown want you to do this show last five years and they want you to play Jamie. I was like, what? Because I, the thing is, I, I had never met any of these people before I got approached. So I was like, I just couldn't believe it because Jamie is like a dream role. I've listened to last five years since being a kid. Lauren Samuels, I saw on um, the Dorothy, it was Dorothy. Yeah, she was the Dorothy. I just yeah. don't want to yeah. get that wrong. But yeah, I watched her, you know, 10 years ago, I was a kid and I watched her. Um, so all the, and Jason Robert Brown, I just love his work. So just, I was just like, this is a bit crazy that, and I didn't even audition. Um, so it was a bit mad getting that call um, and I think they were just familiar with my work. Jamie had seen me in a few things and they were also looking for an authentically Jewish guy to play Jamie which I think is brilliant. Um, so I think all those elements locked into place and they gave my agent a ring and of course I jumped at the opportunity. Then, yeah, uh, it was yeah. fantastic. Uh, it was great when it was announced, I was like wow we're getting a, an original piece of theatre, not original piece obviously because last five years have been done loads but yeah. an original as in you had just done it in lockdown it was original to you guys 
and we're getting it in lockdown, like we're getting this piece of theatre. Yeah, and it's just um, for this time, really. Yeah, it's um, that's it. Well, that's five years is great on stage. I've seen, a, I've never seen a professional production of it, apart from your guys' production, obviously. Uh, but I've seen a few Am Jam productions of Last Five Years, and it's fantastic. Um, but yours, obviously, was is exclusive because you'll never, hopefully, we'll never have another lockdown performance of it. Um, well, fingers crossed. Um, yes. <laughs> fingers crossed this is a one-off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to do it in person. That's what me and Lauren would love, to, you know, reprise it in person. That would be amazing. We ha uh, you have your first ticket sale. <laughs> um, for every performance you do, I will buy a ticket. Thank you. Um, for every night, definitely. It was, oh, we, we definitely could we'll hopefully see that in real life, definitely. So Marge wants to know, how long does it take for you to put five years on? Yeah, great question. So it was an interesting process from, I think, the first call to the deadline of when the videos had to be done by. It was probably about a month because then obviously they needed time to edit it all together. Um, so yeah, I probably, but I probably got started on learning the material because it's a beast of a score and <laughs> lyrics and obviously I knew the tunes, but I didn't know the lyrics. And I mean, some of my songs were seven minute monologues. Um, so it wasn't easy. So I just was like, I need to get these lyrics and this music into my blood as soon as possible because we didn't have the luxury of a West End rehearsal process, for example. Do you know what I mean? We basically had a rehearsal process to do the entire performance, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I had to learn it, know it, and perform it basically in a month. So it was, it was tough. Um, I think, I don't want to say this, but I think Lauren did do it before. So maybe it was slightly easier because she was familiar with the material, but it was, it was a, it was a big task for me, but a wonderful one, you know. You always grow, I think, when you feel challenged. So, yeah, that was it. Was it was a great thing as well as a stressful thing. <laughs> I can imagine it was stressful. Yes, uh, having a short period of time to do anything and is especially to that higher standard is very stressful. Definitely. Um, so, so Mia me wants to know um, moments come and go in live theatre. She says, but how intimidating was it that the ca camera was there capturing every second of your performance? Yeah, see, that was a hard element that I am not used to. Not even when you do TV and film, because you, you, you have other people that are in control of when they say cut, stop. We only have time for three takes here. You have to do it. Whatever you do, we're going to take and you have to move on. And then the editor will control your performance. But with this, I was pretty much, I mean, Lauren did direct me, um, but... I, could, I had the ability to do it as many times as I wanted um, till I was happy, which is a curse <laughs> because, I, you know, I'm, I'm an absolute perfectionist, as I think a lot of performers are. Um, but you kind of had to get to the stage where you were like, do you know what? I'm going to do it once, twice, and whatever I give, that's what I would do on stage. So I, you know, and... I had to kind of surrender to that. What What was the original question? I don't know if I've answered it in that. I think you kind of have it. Just as yeah. how intimidating was it with the camera oh, capturing every second of your performance? Yeah, so so I guess it, it was a little bit, um, but I think I got to the stage that I was just like, do you know what? If I make a little mistake here, a little mistake there, that's what I would do live. And we're, we're going for a live experience here. So, yeah. No, okay, definitely. That, that answers the question, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, apologies for the pronunciation here. Um, Delara, I think. Delara. Uh, Delara, I think. Um, I, says, how long did it take to actually film the last five years? Uh, so, the actual filming was about three weeks, I think. I did the whole thing. Yeah. Three weeks, wow. Disney, yeah. like, what was that, but just, just, just over an hour, wasn't it? Just an hour and a half, it's almost? About an hour and 20, I think. Uh, it was, yeah, I thought yeah, that. Um, I was amazing. I lost track of time, to be honest, in the, the whole oh. time. It, it was about 10 minutes to me because it flew through. Um, Thank you. But at Disney, it, like, it felt like it took ages and ages to film, like, um, and Liam. Yeah, we had to set up, like, every scene and 
yeah. it, you know, it takes longer than you think to set up, set up the shot because obviously we're doing, we're doing our set design, we're doing our lighting, our filming. So just to like get all those elements, how you want it and how Lauren wants it. Cause I, if she had to approve everything um, and it was her vision. So, you know, doing that from another location as well, it's very time consuming. Um, so yeah three weeks <laughs> i think it was a was it marisha wallace said in an interview recently that the, the only th she thinks obviously she wants to be back in theater and be back working obviously she says but i want my, my my helpers back she says because at the moment you have to be your own lighting your sound your makeup your That's costume I mean. she says i can't do it she says i need I these great people to, you, to help me it really makes you appreciate um you know your crew your dresses your wiggies there is such a massive team backstage in a in any show and you can take it for granted but yeah this is showing all performers out there how important those people are yeah for sure i think you all knew it but it's actually physically showing you how important they are um definitely so, so kimberly wants to know was this filmed in your own house so sorry I think we kind of know that answer, but we'll let yeah. you answer it. Well, actually, technically it wasn't my own house. It was my parents' house, because um, that's where I was spending most of the lockdown. I'm now back in my flat. Uh, but yeah, I was at, that was my parents' house. So it was your parents' house that had the tree wallpaper? Yes. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that at the end, because I love okay. it. Okay, um, it's so funny to me that everyone knows about these things now. It's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, right. how, how do you know it's your parents' house? <laughs> Better than maybe your parents know it, because <laughs> they've studied it in the film. I don't know the film, but they, they recording. So, so moving on slightly, Susan, obviously she, she absolutely loved the performance. She, this question came in immediately after she was finished uh, watching the show. Oh. Uh, and she says, overall, so not just at the last five years, overall, what has been your favourite role or solo song? Oh gosh, that's a hard question. Favorite role I've I've played? Yes. Um, do you know what? I might have to say. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, I might have to say. I might have to. So I under you said it in my introduction. Um, I covered the role of Fabrizio in The Light in the Piazza, um, I didn't actually get to do a performance for an audience, but I did get to do a few dress rehearsals um, with the full cast, uh, which in LA actually, and that experience with those people doing that role was one of my favorite things I've ever done. So I, I have to say Fabrizio, even though I never got to do it with an audience, which hopefully one day might happen but that that role was so challenging for me I don't know if you're familiar with the show but Adam Gettle wrote the music and it is one of I think the hardest technically the hardest musical theatre scores up there with you know Sondheim just rhythmically notes wise lyrics it's in Italian most of it so I was going to say it's, it's in a foreign language it's, yes it's more of an opera than a, it's still exactly. classic musical but it's more of an opera exactly and even though I have I've now learned I have that other side to my voice before I did it I hadn't flexed that muscle too much if that makes sense so it was a huge growing experience for me uh learning how to do that more operatic style learning the different language and you know when you're when you're like up there with Renee Fleming and um, Celinda and um, Brian Stokes, Mitch, just these people that are just like Tony Award winner, you're just like, it is amazing. It's amazing. It was so, a fantastic uh, cast. Like even oh. even the Dombo were all fantastic. There was there was there wasn't a bad voice on the, the stage that night. Um, I saw it twice. Did saw you? Saw once, knowing nothing about it. I saw it oh. like I knew nothing about it. Um, and it was only 20 performances, so I thought, right, I need to check it out, see it. Loved it, and went straight to the box office the next morning and got a ticket for them <laughs> that oh, night. Oh, that's amazing. Fantastic. It's just um, beautiful, isn't it? It's just it needs so a full run. It needs a full run. Yeah, I agree. It definitely needs a full run. I have you in as a Fabrizio? Let me see it. Um, next time, if that's the case, next time I'll maybe trip Rob up. Uh, get him a few, <laughs> no, 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 make sure no, he has no. a few nights off to get no, used to 
I can know Rob is absolutely incredible. Yeah, Rob, Rob's fantastic. Uh, I, was, I, was obviously, I was obviously joking, in case anything does happen to Rob, <laughs> it's just, yeah. I was joking. I love Rob to bits. Uh, anyway, Susan also asked, um, have you had a role, because I think this is quite a good question, um, have you had a role that you thought would be too challenging or that you were worried or afraid to take on? Do you know what I'm going to have to say? I kind of answered it in that last one. I think it was the answer. I think definitely it was, it was the language thing. It was the calibre of the cast. Um, I think everything just kind of scared me before I did it. Um, but now I just feel on the other side of it, feel so grateful because now, I, you know, nothing really scares me because if I could tackle that, um, I think I can pretty much do anything in, mus in the musical theatre canon. Yeah, because yeah. that's definitely, I'm, as I say, I'm not a performer, I don't know much about vocal range or anything like that, but for me as a, as a fan of shows, Piazza definitely was a very tough musical to watch, but also I think from the performance side, from what I understand from musicals, it's a very, it's like up there with Le Mis and, and oh, Phantom yeah. and those well, kind of thing, vocal. Vocally, vocally it's absolutely same hardness, but actually from a musician's point of view, I'm not damning those shows at all, but rhythmically it's, it's very complicated and it doesn't even, you don't even realise, and I didn't even realise, you listen to like, um, What's a good example? Love to me, one of Fabrizio's song, like mm -hmm. Anak Do. Beautiful song. It seems really simple. It's very poppy. It's got that like pop vibe, uh, but legit pop kind of thing. Uh, but then, if you study the music, it is written in this really hard time signature that you don't even know. So the piano's doing one thing, and then you're singing another uh, rhythm on top. Um, so as a musician, it's such a challenging show. Um, so that's, that's what scared me because I've always been trained, um, you know, to be very specific with, with the material, if yeah. that makes sense. I don't want to just kind of make it up, especially when the composer is there watching. <laughs> um, yeah, so the audience yeah. in the UK, was he in London? He did, what? yeah, Adam, Adam came. Um, he didn't see me sing Fabrizio, thank God, because I would have freaked out. But um, he, he was there in the rehearsal room uh, for a little bit and then into previews and opening night, which was amazing because you don't often get that. So that no. was really cool. That's good to, to know. Um, so moving on slightly, we, we, we may come back to the last five years in a bit, but moving on to your other career, you know, your wider, I think we've mentioned some of them in the, in the introduction. Um, touching on a small film that you were part of, um, what was Rocketman like? Yeah, so that was a really interesting, interesting project. Um, I got, I actually only did one day of filming on that. Um, and what the scene I did was, uh, it was in uh, Elton John's house. And um, it was, it actually annoyingly got cut from the film, the final edit, which is gutting. It ended up on the cutting room floor as many, many scenes do in films. Um, but the scene was, it would go into this, the camera swerved throughout the house and into this room, which was his kind of sex denny room where like there were orgies and gay people and um, uh, drugs. It was very that. So it was kind of this kind of hidden away room in his house. And it was meant to be this kind of sweeping shot. And I was a part of that scene. Um, <laughs> and it was it was amazing it was amazing um because the direct often you don't you know get the real director come work with you and you know the, the director from the film was giving us he, he directed the whole thing and um yeah it was wonderful it was really cool wow so that was an, an interesting scene i'm sure um, yeah <laughs> we'll say no more because we are family friendly, so we'll, get, we'll not go into exact details. We'll skip um, over that one. Yeah, we'll skip over that one now. Uh, have you met Elton John? Tom wants to know. No. Did you meet him? Was he not? No. no, I wish. I wish. Maybe one day. Was Taryn there? Did, was Taryn in that scene? No, 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 no. So there was not none of the actors. No, there, there was one of them. There was 
I don't honestly I don't remember um there was one of the principal actors that were just kind of sitting there um but yeah it was I think it was maybe like I don't know what it what kind of maybe it was him maybe the camera was meant to be his eyes or something like walking apart but yeah no he wasn't all uh, right okay um so mo moving on uh we'll change the background uh because i like to, to Ooh, mix it up and um, what show we, i should have moved that one to when we talked about light like, oh. well we'll go to aladdin oh. um you were in, in, in aladdin for quite a few years um you were in the west end production of aladdin you were understudy to matthew um and you're also ensemble and that as well um we have some pictures that we'll show throughout the, the talk about aladdin we have some pictures oh. of you as aladdin oh, um okay. lovely uh, i like to change my backgrounds up um, but rebecca wants to know tell us what you were feeling during your debut as aladdin mm. wow if you're you can remember going, that far back <laughs> no i can but you're really going there emotionally because that was a big big day in my life um yeah uh, do you actually i might oh <laughs> there's my eye oh god <laughs> no take him away no oh my god that's very funny um i'll tell you a little story actually i've never really told this before um that's I, that's exclusive exclusive okay so i was actually it got very late in my first contract I did. I, I was in it for about 10 months and I still hadn't gone on, which is quite unusual when you cover such a big role. Um, so I was prepared, I'd done the rehearsals, I was maintaining the role myself, you know, going over all the lines, all the steps, or the choreography, or the technical, or the quick changes, it's a mammoth role. Um, so I was ready uh, and waiting, really. Um, and then we were actually in cast change rehearsals because I was staying on another year, but I was changing, slightly changing my ensemble track to do more dancing in Friend Like Me, which yeah. is the genie's big number, best number in the show, amazing. Uh, and I was doing a lot more dancing in it. So uh, I was in rehearsals with the new cast, okay, during the day at Pineapple Dance Studios in right. Boston. Mm -hmm. And my company, my company manager of the show comes in, stops rehearsals and makes a big announcement to the whole new cast that I just met that day and says, Danny Becker, I need to um, tell you something. And I was like, what's going on? And then he kind of says, you're going to play Aladdin tonight. And it was this, um, everyone cheered. And because often you get these phone calls when you're on the toilet or, you know, on the way into work. Yeah, <laughs> you don't you're not get it in front of your colleagues and your direct it was so special and then uh he escorted me over to the prince edward it was a rainy day and you know i got ready i got my voice warmed up i told everyone um because everyone was on kind of red alert <laughs> especially my parents and they manically tried to get a ticket that night um and actually gosh it was such a funny day because normally you rehearse not rehearse, you um, do warm up on stage and everything. God, I'm going into detail here, tell me to stop. But it's all coming back to me, it's all coming back to me. Um, but we had to have warm up in the bar, front of house bar, because um, because there was something not working. One, the built automation wasn't working or they, they were trying to oil it out. It, it was fine in the show, but uh, they were having problems, so they had to work on it. Um, so that was scary. And then I remember requesting because as an understudy, you never rehearse with the principal cast. You only rehearse with your covers. So therefore, I would never have looked Trevor and Jade and all, every other principal in that role in the eye and set, you know, done anything. So I was like, I requested that I wanted to have a scene with everyone before, um, just so they know what I'm like, I know what they're like. And that was really special and it was, very emotional you know finally getting to and they felt very emotional as well it was this i don't know why it was just this very um amazing night and then my parents and my family came and yeah it was it was magical in every way you managed to get tickets that's good and uh, that was what i was about to ask you for you um, <laughs> surely the theater helps them if it's your debut surely they would help them uh, I think at least appearance. Yeah, no, I think the company manager said, "Do do you need any tickets tonight?" Um, obviously, 
they never give a freebie. <laughs> no, <laughs> so, never, no, but I think they, they help you. Too. But yeah, they did help. But luckily, Aladdin was a huge sellout show. So it, it was not easy to always get tickets last minute. But luckily, yeah. they, luckily they could. Yeah, thankfully they, they could. Because Aladdin was a success. And it was quite a shock yeah. when the same was closing. Um, yeah. for, for I don't know how much of a shock it was for you guys, but for fans no, it was. It was, it was um, a shock. It was a shock. Definitely. Yeah. It was a shock for us because it was going so well, and we thought, oh, hey, so it's closing. Um, Callum wants to know um, you have been fantastic in everything you've been in, uh, according to him. That's his words. I agree with him, but it's his words. <laughs> what was your favourite song to perform in Aladdin? That's what he wants to know. Um, uh, I will answer this. Uh, oh, there we go. Another one. Oh, Jade. That was yes. my first show. That was from my first show, which we were just... Oh, that your debut? Yeah, that was from the just before the first show. Oh, so I was probably very scared. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't look it then. Definitely you can't tell, you can't tell. Um, I'd say it's Proud of Your Boy, but the reprise version at the end of Act One. Um, and that's the moment where he finally becomes a prince and he's on stage on his own with a spotlight, centre stage, singing his face off um and it's yeah it, that was a really i just love i love where it how it feels in my voice and um it's just a really cool moment in the show yeah. Talk, talking about that um song and um, oh, yeah. you managed to we got we got a, a version of yours um last week actually we sent top got a version and you were in the pride concert singing proud of your boy Yes, yeah, I did. Uh, you did. It certainly it caused a, a great start. Uh, a lot of people said it was nice to see again um, oh. that version um, of A, of that song, and B, of, of an Aladdin, a previous Aladdin singing it. Um, so that, I think that was really nice, and I was glad to, to have you in the show, um, very much so. Thank you. Uh, thank you for asking. Probably. No, no, thank you for... It's never thank you for asking, because it's always <laughs> you guys that are needing the thanks, not us. That's why we do what we do. Um, so Sam wants to know if you could play any other character in Aladdin, who would you play and why? Oh, obviously not Aladdin. We're not classic. Yes, Aladdin. yes. I. Oh, that's tricky. There are a few. Um, when I was in the show, I did want to give Jasmine a go. I'm not going to lie, because <laughs> I loved, I loved her song, uh, Palace Walls. There she is. I loved her song, Palace Walls. It was what I was obsessed with that song while I was in the show. I don't know why. Um, and it's not, it, it's not, oh, this is hard to say. She's on very sporadically throughout the show, but she has wonderful moments. So it's like a very um, nice track because you get all these lovely moments. Um, but I don't think, well, it's hard to say. I don't know if it's as exhausting as doing Aladdin. So if that makes sense. Well, Aladdin's on constantly. Exactly. You know, he's, he's, he's not off very often. Exactly. Um, ever. I think. No, certainly not uh, very many scenes. It's like what, two songs in each, one song in each act, but it's nothing. Yeah, that's about it. Um, obviously, being the, the, the lead, the, the name of the, the show, I think there's a, there is a name for that, but I kind of think of the character. The, oh, uh, op eponymous. It's eponymous. when you're, yeah. Is that yeah. When, when you're what? That's when you're the, the title character. So yes, like, that's it. That's that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Aladdin or I don't know. <laughs> um, what would you, Annie? If you're like Annie and Annie, Annie, Annie that's another one. The name of the title, yeah. Even yeah. Hansen, that's another one. Yeah. Um, so I'm at, we don't need to, to mention anymore. <laughs> um, so Amanda wants a small controversial question, but probably the most controversial we'll get tonight. Don't worry. Okay. Um, do you prefer the cartoon or the live action Aladdin movie? Amanda wants. Oh, to know. this is easy. I say the cartoon, the original. Yeah, that's that's the classic. I don't think you can really beat it. I did I did enjoy the live action. I really did, and it gave it gave some new insight to the story that hasn't been, you know, said before with Jasmine and she was a much stronger character. You know, it was very interesting. New songs, I enjoyed them, but um nothing beats that original. And actually I wasn't a huge um I'm not a huge animation fan in general. I know that sounds crazy, 
Um, I know, sorry, uh, but the one thing I did watch genuinely, this isn't even a lie, was Aladdin. Me and my brother had that one uh, tape uh, and we put that in and we used to watch it all the time. So yeah, that, that it's, a, it's a special film of my childhood. So yeah, that's... Yeah, no, Aladdin was, and you can't be Robin Williams, hands down, like the best genie ever. Um, Trevor comes close, but uh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't try and beat him, I'm sure, but and it's not about competition, it's not about beating people. No, it's very, it's very different. Yeah. Um, there's one thing I'm, that I think a lot of people can agree on is uh, Will Smith wasn't great, but that's a different story. Um, I said it. <laughs> I'll go there. His singing voice, his singing voice. No comment. Uh, obviously, the of your boy you talked about earlier, that was, I don't, not a lot of people know this, but that was actually was written for the original movie. The cartoon, yeah, it was yeah. Cut, but obviously, it only came about when obviously when they, they wrote the musical. Yeah, they they took it out of Alan Menken wrote it with. Oh my gosh, I've forgotten his partner. He he, I think he died at the time. Uh, have you? Do you know this story? Um, no, I, don't, I know Alan Menken wrote it, but I'm no, terrible. I'm not one hundred percent, so I don't want to say. But um, yeah, they they both wrote it for the film, and then it got taken out and yeah they brought it back and I think it's one of the most beautiful songs so I'm so glad they put yeah. it in the And they gave them, everybody thought it was written for the musical but it actually wasn't so that's just a, yeah. a bit of a small fact for, for anybody watching and um, not a lot of people know. Um, so changing the background again, um, where is it? There it is. So we're going to touch a bit more, I know we have touched about in this already um, but we're going to touch a bit more about it. Um, and because Emily wants to know, what was it like being in light at the South Bank? Oh, it was it was so much fun. It was it was like springtime. I was lucky enough to just I actually overlapped doing Aladdin and Piazza, so I switched on the other side of the river, which was a nice change to Soho. <laughs> um, so it was lovely. The South Bank's an amazing venue. Um, there's a market right out of stage door, so I love that. <laughs> but um, the show itself, I mean, I've said it's, it was just so special to me. Um, that cast was was everything and that music. And also, I haven't spoken about the orchestra. It was 60, oh no, maybe it was 50 piece orchestra. And you just never, ever, ever get that in musicals. So, you know, singing that with them behind you every night is like it's just a dream so yeah that was oh, a very thing. it was a strange theater that was my first time i'd never been in the south bank before um so it was a it was a strange theater to be in um I'd, it was a, it was a lovely don't get me wrong it was nice but it, it wasn't your prince edward door no, uh, the no it's, it's, that. It's, yeah it's, i think it's more I concert think, hall yeah totally so it is it is an un, oh, it's an unusual um venue for that kind of show i think you're right um because i think because it had people like renee fleming and it was such a big orchestra it was more it was a lot about the sound and all of that which you know it lends itself to so well but i think um i think the show would work amazingly in in a smaller space as well because it's so it is an intimate story um, so I would love to see it one day in like a chocolate factory or something like that. Just to yeah, flip well, it on its head, see something like a totally different version in London. But um, then you won't get that orchestra. And I mean, that orchestra. Oh, the orchestra. I think the orchestra just made like put the final tap on yeah, the it's, it's yeah. worth It's worth the ticket price alone with that orchestra. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But the, the cast... I'll be perfectly honest. I knew the, the British cast. So I know. I obviously knew yourself. I knew Liam. I knew to Alex, the guy for the uh, crown. Alex, yeah, uh, yeah, Alex. And I knew Rob, obviously. Um, these two lovely ladies. I'll be perfectly honest. I had never watched Descendants, so I had no idea who Cor no. Dove was. <laughs> and my mother got very excited over Renee with, with the fact I'd seen her. But I'm like, who? Who? Yeah. And yeah. like they were fantastic, and I, but. That just shows you that they were probably the two biggest names in the show. They were because they were two Americans, um, but they didn't. That didn't bring me to the show. I brought the show. That was what brought me to the show. That actually, I lay in there. I'm like, right. There's only two performances. I need to go and see this. Check it out. See what it's about. 
and fell in love with it. Um, definitely. Um, you just have everything was fantastic. Austin wants to know what's your favourite song in the show. Favourite song in Piazza. Oh, again, hard one. Let me. Um, I think I'll have to say. I think. I think it's love to me. I spoke about it before it being really hard. Um, it's yeah, this very seemingly simple song, but just beautiful. It's just so beautiful, and I just loved. I just love. I just connected to it. I just really connected to it. So I loved that. But um, what else? Did I, yeah, I'll say that. I'll give that. That's uh, right. Oh, every song is fantastic. But yeah, I've got to say that one was good. I'm going to change picture. We do have, oh. are we right? Is that you there? That is me, yeah. Yes, you're with the uh, Renee and, and Duff. Yes. Uh, and so I take it this was one of the rehearsals because you said you yeah. didn't get a chance for the audience. Yeah, this was a rehearsal, yeah. And um, yeah, so this is that never before, not no, so never before scene because you can, it's Google, oh, I think it's got that from. <laughs> so it's, it's not a secret photo in any way. No. Um, it's either, it's either um, Google or your Instagram, I'm not quite sure. I got people it's from different places. <laughs> um, so Alexa wants to know, um, not the the um, Alexa, uh, this is a real person. Okay, um, I didn't go, Alexa, ask a question to Danny. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alexa, how, how did you find out about going to LA with the production? Well, actually, um, I always knew about it. So I, it was in the initial, um, what got sent to me through my agent when I was auditioning for the show. We always get a breakdown, I don't know if you know, a breakdown of the character, what you have to do, and information on the dates of the production and where it will be. So I saw it said South Bank, which was amazing, and then it said LA Opera. And I remember ringing my agent like, wait a minute, they want this cast to go to LA? Are you sure? Like, or is this somewhere else? And even he was like, wait a minute, I'm going to investigate because you never get them casting in England to, to, to do a show in LA. Like, it just hardly ever happens. Very rare. So he confirmed, yeah, I guess, I guess they're going to take you out to LA if you get it. So um, that's when I first found out, but that was only in the audition. Um, but then later on, uh, when I accepted the job, they said there's a possibility of the show going out to Chicago as well. Uh, and they actually offered me to go to Chicago, uh, the Lyric, I think it's called the Lyric Opera in Chicago. Um, so they added that, which was incredible. But unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I got um, Prince of Egypt in that time. So I had to I, I couldn't do the Chicago stint, um, but originally it was for all three venues, which was just be, I mean, just to get that in a job is really amazing. Especially with two, two in America, like you've broke up, you've broke America now. Uh, and that, that, moves, <laughs> that, that moves us on to the next question, actually. Aaron says, how does it feel to be a worldwide star? Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, but um, yeah, I, I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron actually saw you in LA. He's from LA. Um, he, that, that question came from um, oh, wow. him in LA. So he's, that's why he asked that question. Because uh, oh, wow. he was your, your, a, a name that you knew as soon as it came up. He obviously follows you on Twitter. And as soon as I tagged you in it, it was, he was one of the first to come in um, and say that. He started his message by saying he saw you in LA um, in the light. Um, how does it feel to be a little voice there? So yeah. You have fans all over the place. Well, that's lovely. Um, to know. That's really sweet. Um, two or three of them about the last five years also came from America as well. Um, yeah, thanks, wow. I think that was slightly more thanks to the collateral. Uh, I think having Jamie, I um, was attached to the production because it was uh, his, his company, Lambert Production, his company. Yeah. Um, uh, can I, that kind of helped with the worldwide thing with the last five years. Right. Uh, having them behind it because I think a few of them come up and said, oh, it's Jamie that... that tweeted it and things, so they bought tickets and loved it. Wow, yeah. Um, so moving on to your current position. Um, if you haven't seen it, why not? Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, this one here. Yeah. Um, in case you're wondering. 
Um, so Alicia asks, um, firstly, what is it like to be in an OG Stephen Swartz musical? I mean, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember when we were again auditioning. I was just like, oh, actually, when I when I was accepting the job, I I said to my agent, listen, I just have to, I have to do this because my uh, biggest show and like love when I was a kid that really got me into theatre was Wicked um, and that's the one I was really obsessed with and really just you know hooked me um, so to do an original Schwartz show in the West End was very special because it kind of feels like a bit of a full circle moment for me because because I love Wicked so much I almost was imagining that, like, I'm basically the new Wicked. I don't know yeah, if yeah. I am, but yeah, um, he just a new Wicked. Yeah, it's the same. It's the UK. It's the UK producers of Wicked. It's him. Um, it's his writing. It's his name. It's everything. It's his style. But it's almost it's the male version. They they did actually say that um, Moses and Ramesses are kind of like Alpha Alpha and Glinda. Um, I can see that, yeah. Kind of like his male version of that. So, you know, again, to understudy the alpha but male version of that, if if that doesn't sound too crazy, um, you know, it was very special. Uh, and yeah, getting to do loads of things coming with being an original cast, like the album we did, uh, TV stuff, you know, all of that you don't get when you take over a show often. So that was really cool to experience all of that other stuff as well. Yeah, because I think the album was one of the first excitements of lockdown, because um, the album was released not long after lockdown. I don't know if that was yeah. perfectly done. Uh, I don't know when the original date was set. If that was the original date, I don't know. Um, but obviously it was one of the first kind of big things to happen in lockdown was the Prince Egypt cast recording. Um, I remember it coming onto Spotify and obviously coming on to, to Apple Music. I bought the album, I listened to it on Spotify. I, oh, it was just, I, mean, I was like, yes, um, deliver us is yes um probably that and is it faster is that the name of the song yeah i think these two songs are fantastic i think they're all brilliant but i think those are my two favorite definitely oh um, great but um and obviously you talked about tv obviously you were on dancing and ice um as a as a cast and um, that was that was great to watch um i didn't get tickets i did try and get tickets for the audience but didn't get them oh. um but no, so certainly it was great to watch on TV. It was good to see musical theatre getting a prime time, okay, Sunday night, but prime time Sunday night slot um, on probably the most watched TV show in January. Um, and the only probably live talent show that we filmed this year uh, due to coronavirus. Because um, yeah. it looks like everything else is cancelled, but hey ho. But anyway, moving on. So Adam wants to know what's your favourite song in Prince of Egypt? Um, my favourite song is probably, oh, it's probably Heartless. It's the song that Nefertari, the character Nefertari sings, sung by the wonderful Tanisha, my good friend. Um, she's just, was glorious in that role, my God. Uh, and it's such, it's such an unexpected song. It comes towards the end of Act Two, um, and it's just this beautiful, simple, song but it just packs a punch and she sings sings it so beautifully no definitely that atlas is good and um, what's the one i can't i'm terrible with names apart from obviously the the, the most famous song in the show i um, apart from that one what's the one where Which gary will what sings oh through heaven's eyes through heaven's eyes that one's quite a good song as well that's i think great. that's that's a good song i think that they're just it's a Stephen Swartz some musical because everything, it's like Wicked, every song is great in its own way. Um, Prince of Egypt, every song. Obviously you have the, the most famous song, obviously, the, the Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston number, um, When You Believe. Um, yeah. Everybody knows that song, whether you know the musical or the film, um, everybody knows When You Believe. Um, you also had the Leon Jackson version as well because he did X Factor when it was single. Um, I'm just that sad that I know the X Factor well enough to know that. Oh, <laughs> he did it as his winning single for that. So, no, but the has Mariah seen your performance? Has she seen? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Um, maybe. 
but potentially. <laughs> I don't well, know. It's, it's, it's not anything have... to do with the show, per se, but obviously she did the, the original version of that yeah, song. Yeah, it would be cool. I'm sure she knows of it, hopefully. Um, I'll have to ask Alexia Kadeem for you. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's just for you. No, I'm just... I don't need to know it. it's just whether you knew it, because obviously no. that's, that's a matter for you guys as a cast. So Anton, obviously, to, he touches on, you were only open for two months um, before lockdown started, unfortunately. Where you, so he wants to know where you settled in your role and had you been on for any of your understudy roles? So I did feel quite settled within my ensemble track and um, we were just starting to, you know, enjoy enjoy the eight shows a week and um, the dressing rooms, you know, enjoying the life of it all. Uh, and we were just about to get into cover rehearsals, I think. So we closed on the Monday. My mm. first uh, rehearsal for um, Moses with the musical director to sing it all through was Tuesday. It was scheduled. So I was like, of course it happens like this. So I never actually um, even started rehearsals on any of my covers. I was one day out literally one day out um but i'd done a lot of work and um learned the part uh at that point so i knew it so i could have uh got through it but um you know official rehearsals hadn't started for that but yeah we, we were when just you talk about rehearsals what happens if luke had fell ill during previews would you be able to step in for them uh potentially yeah you kind of have to you have to be able to but as a cover um, you never get rehearsed till um, till like about a month into the run because you've got previews and all of that. Um, that's the real, real hard thing about being a cover that you you need to know your stuff the moment you open because there's every possibility that you could go on, but they don't officially rehearse you till so it's that really scary time for a cover where you just hope you don't get thrown on in the first month. Well, the one I remember is uh, Evan Hansen, because obviously Sam fell ill during the uh, previous for that, so Marcus was flung in at the deep end for most oh, of the previous. I remember wow. that's, that was what you were saying, that's what was going through my head. I'm like, wow. poor Marcus. That's what happened wow. in that show for him. He, he um, was like a brave guy and very talented. Uh, um, anyway, Karen wants to know, have you seen, I think you kind of know the answer to this, but have, we, have you seen the DreamWorks movie? Yes, yeah. I watched, it. I watched it not actually that long, maybe two, three years ago. Someone showed me it um, and then I re-watched it for when I was auditioning. So you said you're, so you mentioned earlier you're Jewish. Yeah, is that that's correct? Yeah. Yes. And you've never seen The Prince of Egypt till about two years ago. I know, I know. it's crazy. It's because I, I never really watched animations. But so um, my, I thought your school would show you your... your no, and everything no. would. Your parents would be like, "This is us. This is." I know it's, it's, it's a massive it's Jewish terrible. film. Massive, massive Jewish story. It is. Um, it's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's funny that I've never seen it, but I get to cover <laughs> the Jewish king or whatever we call it. So <laughs> I yeah, make most... up for, I'm making up for it now. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yeah. So I, David touches on press night. I was there in press night, sitting um, in row seven, but David touches on it, and he says, as a cast, what was going through your head at the beginning of press night? Oh, well, I don't... It was a late start. Yeah, you'd know that if you... <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> so we, we were already very excited. Press nights, West End press nights, are the most thrilling and exciting. It's like Christmas and your birthday times 10 all rolled up into one night. It really is because you're flooded with all these presents and gifts and chocolates and champagne before the show, uh, which is always so amazing. And you give out presents and it's this really exciting thing. And the, but there was a buzz in the theater and energy. And you, Steven's there and all the creatives are there and the producers and there's big talks. And then you get into hair and makeup and you're, buzzing and so excited and then we got a huge party to look forward to after um, at the British Museum which was insane but then we're standing in our beginners positions and they we're slowly waiting like when's it gonna start we're meant to have started um, and then we slowly get an announcement that this well 
that there's technical difficulties um, and we had to wait um, and we ended up waiting about yeah 30 40 minutes and well they reopened the bar for us that's how bad it was they reopened the bars yeah they reopened for the, the, bars. Audience, for the audience so that's how bad yeah. it was like and we were all just backstage trying to keep warm and keep focus um, but it turned out there was a, a sound issue yeah. um, which is I mean it's never ever happened in any other preview in any show post that any show I've ever been in, that's never happened. But of course, it happens when you've got... Oh, it has to have a press night. Every, every press person, every important mm -hmm. person in the industry, of course it happens. I spoke to, to Stephen, I, I, I spoke to Mr. Swartz uh, at interval of press night, and he, that's exactly what he said. He says, if it's going to go wrong, it's going to go wrong on press night. He says, it's, it's, it's like the opening night, so obviously things are going to go wrong. He says, hopefully it doesn't, but if it's going to go wrong... That, that's what previews are for, for things to go wrong. You buy tickets exactly. to a preview show knowing that things might not mm. go particularly to plan. Um, they're, they're kind of press rehearsals, if you like. Um, but then, obviously, they, they should have ironed out by press night. But hey-ho, technology hey -ho. is great um, if it works. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when, when yes. it works. But the show went on and the whole, we saw the whole show and everything. It was fin absolutely fantastic. Thank um, you. Definitely. Um, one of the best musicals, the bit, obviously without spoiling it, because it's going to come back and it's just extended, obviously. Um, obviously, your, one of the taglines was only 32 weeks only. And actually, it's going to be longer than that now because it's not coronavirus. Uh, so that tagline's out the window. Um, but the, the, the pattern of the sea, obviously without spoiling too much, that was the bit I'm thinking, so how are you going to manage that? I came, I'm watching this and I'm like, how are you going to? And then when it happens, you're like, wow. Mm. Wow, that that alone's worth the money. Like that scene alone, when you obviously it's spoiling too much with it. When you walk through the scene, and everything is oh, yeah, it's it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I love doing that. Yeah. It makes you feel like you're actually in the scene. Wow, um, that's definitely bad. Well, I was to say, don't want to spoil too much because it's a show that's still open. Um, if it's been closed, we can talk about it a lot more. So Cameron says, um, he can quite a good question actually. If you had to give your 16-year-old self one piece of advice, what would it be? I think it would just be uh, chill out and believe in yourself. I mean, it, it's funny I'm saying this while you have that behind you, but I mean, there can be miracles when you there can. There yeah. can. I mean, it's so true and... Um, I think it's a lot, you know, you have to work hard, you have to train, which I did. And I, um, you know, I'm, I'm a hard worker, but you need that belief. And that's a huge part of it, because if you don't believe in yourself, how can anyone else? Um, so, yeah, that would be the that would be the big thing. That's very true. It's, uh, is it RuPaul that comes to mind when you think, think of that thing? Because he says, uh, if you don't love yourself, how in the earth is somebody else going to love you or something like that? Um, yeah. So yeah, I have that on my wall somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. RuPaul the God. Uh, <laughs> last fan question for tonight. Um, you'll be glad to know. Uh, Izzy has asked a, quite a, a question we get quite a lot at the moment. But she says, if you had to go into lockdown with one character that you've played, who would you go into lockdown with and why? Oh, who would I go into lockdown with? That's so funny. Um, uh, let me think. Do you know what? I might say, we haven't spoken about this character or this show tonight, but I would say Don Lockwood from Singing in the Rain, which I did last year. Um, yeah, he's a movie star. He's cool. He's a great dancer. I think I could learn a bit from him. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a good one. I think he'd be fun. So obviously we haven't, we had, we unfortunately didn't get any questions in for Singing in the Rain, but you did play Dawn uh, in a performance last, last year, 2019, wasn't it? Yeah, last year. Yeah, where else was that? That was actually in the Isle of Man, which was an amazing experience. I've never been there. Um, yeah, and I kind of, what do they call it? Comeovers. I think I, I was a comeover. Uh, someone that's not originally from the island uh, and it was amazing not only performing in the gaiety which is this mansion 
do you know Matt Mansion is the guy that designed like the Palladium and all these amazing oh, yeah. beautiful West End houses. So it was it was it's a, man, a Victorian mansion theatre, stunning. Uh, but you know, doing that role and everything. But it was, uh, you know, the these islanders inviting me in, and that was really special to me. I loved that. No, it was. Um... Certainly, but but that's us at the end of the fun questions. Thank you for, for answering those. And um, we have one thing before you go, which is the, the tradition of the not so quick fire round. Okay. Um oh disappeared. Hello, oh, back. <laughs> um so it's just quick fire, you can be as quick as you like. Um when you start asking the questions, you'll understand why it's now called the not so quick fire round. Okay. But these are more about you rather than, than the roles that you've played in the past. Okay. So the first question is, what would your dream role be, regardless of age or race? Oh, okay. Um, and gender? No, gender. No, we'll come to gender in a minute. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Um, I'd say dream role... I'm going to... I said this on my um, Instagram the other day, and I'm going to just... It's in, it's, it's in my head, so I'm going to say this. It is... I think this is the character's name. This is terrible. Uh, Leo Frank in Parade, which yeah. is a Jason and Robert Brown musical. Uh, and I, I actually, I didn't say I did 13 um, when I was training. So I've, and I played the lead in that Evan Goldman. So I've done that, then Jamie. And I've won like, to Jason I want to Jason. I want to complete the Jason Robert Brown Jewish role. So that's, that's what I want to do, yeah. Right, that parade's a great musical, definitely, and it's due oh, to come back on the West End without a doubt. Um, I think anything, to be honest, is worth a comeback at the moment, but that's a different story. Um, they will come back. Peters will be back without a doubt. They will. They More will. so now after last night's announcement, but that's a different story. Um, we don't get into politics on this channel. Um, <laughs> so the, the, coming back to, to dream roles, obviously that was your dream male role. Um, what would be your dream gender bend role, which is obviously a role traditionally played by a female? Oh, I know. Can't I'm touch on Jasmine, so don't use that. It's an easy one. No, 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 no. Can't no, touch no. on Jasmine. Um, uh, there are so many. I'm going to say something, and then I'll, I'll think later of something better. But um, I've had so many messages back from other people saying, oh, I wish I'd said this, and I wish I'd said that. Um, so don't worry, you're not the only one. Um, I mean, the one that really pops to mind is Alphaba. Yeah, I think I think secretly every male, especially singer males, want to play that part. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we need we need to do a a, a gender bend version of Wicked. Um, yeah. We have said it a few times on this channel. We definitely I think maybe West End talks. I'll speak to Stephen. We'll get Stephen in for a chat and say like, look, Mister Swartz, we need to do a gender bend version of Wicked for charity because there are oh, so we many West End that. males who'd love, love to do Elphaba. The um, <laughs> so Wolves. I say we'll get Stephen in. That's no chance. But anyway, uh, next question: What's your favourite musical theatre song? That doesn't have to be one you've performed. Someone, this is just like it's too hard. These questions. So I'm thinking of what <laughs> someone answered. Someone asked me this in a, another interview a few weeks ago, and I gave this answer. So I'm going to give the same. Um, I said something's coming from West Side Story. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I I kind I just love the I love what it means. I love singing it, um, and it's yeah, it's just a classic, isn't it? Yeah, I think anything from that from that film is just a classic. Yeah, it's a classic movie, a uh, classic musical. Um, definitely, it's it's obviously coming out in in December. Um, Very cannot, exciting. Well, touch wood, it's coming out in December. Yes. Um, everything else has been delayed at the moment, so hopefully that that doesn't <laughs> get delayed. Um. But yeah, so that's last question of the night. Um, what is your top five shows? It, it can be in any order, and it doesn't have to be ones you've been in. Okay. Um, Wicked, Spring Awakening, um, uh, I'm going to say this, I was lucky enough to see this on Broadway, um, and it's still on. Uh, it's called Jagged Little Pill. It's the oh, Alice nice. Morris set musical. I love that. Um, two more, two more tricky. Uh, chorus line, the chorus line. And what am I going to say? You can't have been in them. 
I can't have. You can. You can I have can. been. Oh, I can. You don't have oh. to have been, but you can be. Okay, I'll say lost. Uh, I'll say um, the light in piazza. That's my last there, one. There we go. That's good. I think you you've been in you've been in a lot of, of good shows, but yeah, the, I'm really looking forward to Jagged Little Pill. I've heard the soundtrack. Obviously, it's I've really been to Broadway since it opened. Um, my thirtieth next year, so Touchwood maybe. I might go oh, for that if it's back open. But then, if it's back open, uh, we'll wait and see where, how things go. But that's us. Um, all that's left for you guys at home to remember is the charity. Um, Danny and me are not just here for fun, although I'd like to hope we did have fun. Um, but we're not just here for fun. We're here to, to raise much needed funds for acting for others. Um, so anything at all that you can donate, because our acting for others is a fantastic charity. We work with 14 partnership charities um, to support the acting community and the whole, the arts community as a whole, um, for every day, not just at the moment, uh, but more so at the moment as well, but they do help all year round. So anything at all that you can spare, pop it in the link below, that'd be fantastic. And then join us next time, when we'll, our next chat with, with somebody that you, remit, you know of, but I, I think you only met for the first time last night, was it? Yes, yes. Uh, and you had your pre late that. press night uh, for that. Um, it's your colleague or your cast member, Lauren Samuels. Um, she has been in shows like Bennett Lee Beckham, the musical, which I'm really looking forward to talking about. Uh, we Will Rock You, uh, and obviously the last five years with yourself in lockdown. So we'll get her point of view from it as well and, and find oh. out just how bad Danny was as a as a cast <laughs> member to work with. Because <laughs> uh, she was obviously, obviously her directional debut as well. So. Um, we've got lots to talk about, about lot to Lauren. Oh, um, send, but thank you very much, Danny. Thank you, thank you. Thank Thanks you for joining us. It's been a genuine pleasure getting to know you um, and, and getting to know a bit more about Danny, not just the parts you've played. But we will be back. We will come back to the, dom, the, 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 dom, 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 the Dominion when it reopens without yeah. any shadow of a doubt. We'll be back. Oh, well, I'll uh, see you at the Dominion. Yes, we'll see you at the stage door eventually. But thank you very much. And guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Proud of your boy. I'll make you proud of your boy. Believe me, bad as I've been born, you're in for a pleasant surprise.